Hi everybody! Today's lesson is on the electromagnetic spectrum and what does that have to do with Bohr's energy levels? So let's get started. First you have to remember some things from physics about energy, wavelength, and frequency. First of all, electromagnetic radiation is light and light. And when we think about light and waves, we need to think about ener energy, wavelength, and frequency. So if you remember, this is what a wave looks like. And the wavelength is from one height to another height. So this is a long wavelength, at least in comparison to this one. This is a short wavelength. This would be considered a low energy light, and this is high energy light. Frequency is how many of these cycles go per second. And since they're traveling at the same speed, the bottom one, more cycles would pass in a given second. So this bottom one is high frequency and high energy, both high frequency and high energy. The top one is low frequency and low energy. The top one is long wavelength and the bottom one is short wavelength. So how are they all related to each other? Direct or inverse? Direct means that if one goes up, the other goes up. Inverse means if one goes up, the other goes down. We should remember that from the first unit. So if you look here, we have low energy and low frequency. So those are direct. High energy, high frequency. If one is high, the other is high. Energy and wavelength. I have high energy, but I have small wavelength, so they're inverse. Or I have small energy and large wavelength, so that's inverse. What about wavelength and frequency? Here I have a long wavelength, but a small frequency, so they're inverse. So those are some of the things you should remember from physics about waves. So what do they have to do with Bohr's atom? Well, we had that really cool lab where we turned out the lights and a lot of things glowed. And that was due to different energies off the electromagnetic spectrum. So one of your targets is to print out an electromagnetic spectrum. You get to use this on the test, so find a nice one that you can use. So here's one I found, and it has the wavelengths. It tells you the frequencies. It tells you the energy, and it tells you this is the high energy, high frequency. This is the low energy, low frequency. These are the short wavelengths, and these are the long wavelengths. It also gives you the names of the electromagnetic spectrum. Let's start over here. This is the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. This is the visible light we see in this region right here. If it has higher energy than visible, it's ultraviolet, or we have X-rays or gamma rays. If it's lower in energy than the visible, we get infrared, microwaves, and radio waves. And how big are those waves? Well, the size of the visible light is about the size of a bacteria. And the size of a radio waves can be as big as a soccer field or even bigger. And the size of x-rays are smaller than water molecules. And gamma rays are even smaller than that. So you get an idea of the size of the waves. And how, where do we get these waves from? Well, we have different sources. We have radio waves. We have microwave ovens that give you microwaves. Uh, we have visible light bulbs that give us visible light. Um, people give off heat, which is in the infrared region. Uh, we have x-ray sources, etc. So a lot of good information here. High energy, high frequency, small wavelength. Low energy, low frequency, large wavelength. So. What, once again, what does that have to do with the Bohr's atom? So when we saw light on that day we did that lab, that was due to electrons coming back down from an excited state to a lower state. When they come back down energy levels, if that energy level is just at the right range, we get to see it as light. If it's too energetic, it's ultraviolet or higher, we don't see it. If it's not as energetic, then it's lower, like infrared, and we don't see it. But if it's just right, then we do see it. So for hydrogen, we saw that tube of hydrogen in the back um, with the high voltage tube. 
And we saw some lines using those funny glasses. And you should have been able to see a couple violet lights, a kind of blue-green light, and a red light. And those were all in this range. When they jumped from energy level to 6 to 2, we got a violet light. When it jumped from 5 to 2, we got a violet light. When it jumped from 4 to 2, we saw a blue-greenish light. And from 3 to 2, we saw a red light. So these are all the four lines that we did see. How do I know that the 5, the 6 to 2 was a blue light? Well, another thing you should know in this scale, Roy G. Brit, Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. The violet is the higher energy, so that would be the biggest energy drop of the visible. Red would be the smallest of the visible. So here are my four visible lines. This had the smallest wavelength, which is the most energy, because it dropped the longest. And the red was the shortest energy and the longest wavelength. If I drop from the six all the way back down to one, that's even more energy, and that's in the ultraviolet range. So these are all in the ultraviolet range. If I drum from the 6 only down to the 3, that is less energy than the visible range, and that only produces infrared light, so I wouldn't see that. So depending on the energy drop, if it, the energy is right within the visible light, we do see it. If it's a high energy drop in the visible, it's on this end, violets and blues and greens. If it's a lower energy drop, then it's in the red, orange, and yellows. So that's how we can relate the electromagnetic spectrum to Bohr's atom. Thanks for listening.